Hi, and welcome to Thoughts for Today, Words for the Week, the week of September the 12th, 2021. I apologize for uh, not having uh, any clip for last week, uh, but we were out for the weekend. I took a, took a Sunday off. But just know that I continue to do these week by week and trust that they continue to be a blessing to you. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us to turn away from our own selfish interests, to take up our cross and to follow you, to find our lives is to live in service of your mission. And so we come before you now, eager to hear your voice and seek your guidance. Open us to your ever-present spirit that's always moving within and around us. Open our lives to your love, open our hearts to your nudging, open our hands to serve, and may our feet go where you lead us as we seek to follow you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name that we pray, amen. Our scripture for the week is found in the Gospel of Mark, the eighth chapter, verses 27 through 38. Jesus will be asked, asking the question, who do you say that I am? And then he moves along to encourage uh, the crowd and his disciples to, uh, to follow him. And so those are kinds of things that we can think about too. Who do we say that Jesus is and uh, are we willing to follow him as the Messiah? Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others say one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. And Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and three days rise again. He spoke, he spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned and looked at his disciples and said this, Get behind me, Satan. You do not have the things in mind, the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with the disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a person to gain the whole world yet forfeit one's soul? Or what can one give in exchange for one's soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord who walks beside your people. And so we pray for people whose walk is lonely, despairing. You are a Lord who raises up those who are bent low by life. And so we pray for those who are held down by the grindings of the day to day and the indifference of the world. You are a Lord who feed the hungry and give drink to the thirsty. So we pray for all who long for bread, physical and spiritual, those who thirst for water and the living water. And may you be the means, O Lord, to provide it spiritually, and may we be the means that can make a difference in the world. You are a Lord who celebrates the small and the insignificant. So we pray for children, especially children this day who are facing uh, the challenges of a, a world turned upside down and the challenges of COVID. We pray for those who feel left out, for those who never get noticed. Lord, you are a Lord who says, follow me. So we pray for courage and faith in our hearts that we may take up our cross and follow you as you lead us to life. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. How do you win the World Series? 
For that matter, how do you graduate from high school or college? How do you eat an elephant? And from a spiritual perspective, how do you follow Jesus? Major League catcher Rick Dempsey, who played a lot of uh, team for a lot of teams, but mostly played with the Baltimore Oreos in the 70s and 80s, uh, said once that good baseball players can't think about the big questions like winning the World Series or winning a string of games. He said a good catcher has to break the down, game down into the smallest parts, one game, one inning, one pitch at a time. And he went on to say that if you play, play one pitch at a time, you eventually look up and you see that you've won the game. Discipleship, following Jesus, taking the way of the cross means taking small steps. And later we look up and we discover where Jesus has actually led us. In the passage of scripture that we read today, Jesus offers an open invitation to discipleship, both to the crowds that are following him and his disciples. If any want to follow me, or if anyone wants to become my followers, Jesus says, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And I would add, it is the path that Jesus follows as well in terms of his own faithfulness to the Father, exemplifying discipleship. Uh, the life of discipleship is a lifetime journey as indicated by the word follow. And the disciples spent three years following Jesus that prepares them along with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, to follow for the rest of their lives Jesus and to have a firm relationship with him. And likewise, uh, it's a three-stage process for you and me. Deny self, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. As I mentioned, it begins with an open invitation. If any would follow, anyone, regardless of person, um, there's no prerequisites, uh, just what the word follow implies, moving along the way, which, by the way, was... Uh, an early way of referring to Christians as followers on the way. You'll find that in Acts 9, 2. And of all the Gospels, Mark particularly <clears throat> has Jesus unable to sit still. He's constantly on the move, um, on, on to somewhere else. Even after the resurrection, as the angels speak to the women in the tomb, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, this is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you may see him, just as he told you. Jesus, ahead of the disciples, even after his resurrection. And if Jesus is ahead of you, then you're following or have the potential to follow. Deny self, take up your cross, follow Jesus. Usually when we hear the word deny, we, we think of uh, that it's going to be painful, that we have to give up something that we like or enjoy, uh, uh, perhaps not, no longer eating desserts, or we have to uh, quit playing a, a sport or uh, set aside a hobby, make some sort of sacrifices. Denying self means, means that we can't, can't do it anymore, at least that's what we think in our minds. But the majority of the Gospels and the texts that use this word deny uh, happen in two spots. The first where Jesus offers this invitation, deny self, deny self. And the second uh, one that pops up at least four times is where Peter denies that he's following Jesus, that he's following Jesus in terms of Jesus has been arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, Peter kind of follows along, tags along, hangs out in the courtyard where uh, one of the young ladies there says, aren't you one of the disciples? And, G and Peter basically, as he's hanging out and warming his hands, replies, uh, I do not understand or know what you're talking about. And the scripture says he denied it, saying those words. Peter claims that he absolutely does not know or has any connection whatsoever to Jesus. Basically, Peter is claiming complete ignorance. To deny, in terms of when you and I deny, 
It's to say that one does not know about or is any way related to a particular person or event. And so for you and me, it's, 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 it's like we have no knowledge. We don't know what you're talking about. And we, when, when, the word used, when the word deny is used, it's the same sort of thing. We don't know anything about ourselves. We don't even have a really good relationship with ourselves. And by saying deny ourselves means, well, we don't know what to do. And so that, God, that gives God the space to work in our lives. And if you go back to the previous verse, verse 33, it allows one to have in mind the things of God as opposed to human thinking or a human point of view. And so what, what it means to deny self is to basically empty ourselves, become an empty slate, open to God, open to the Lord's thinking, way, and direction. And so that's the first step of being a disciple, to deny self. The second is, is to take up your cross. If anyone wants to be my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross. Um, this is a first mention, by the way, of cross in the Gospel of Mark. And our usual thinking with, with uh, taking up a cross is, uh, it, it sounds like suffering. I mean, we remember Jesus being carrying a cross and then uh, being too heavy for him. Uh, is passed on to another, and then he's hung on a cross, and so we, we connect cross with, with suffering and pain. But when Jesus took up his cross, what did he do? He chose to carry out the ministry that God wanted him to do. And that's what it means to, to take up your cross for you and me, uh, to make an active choice to live uh, out the ministry that God has called you and I as individuals to carry out, to do every day. And it differs from one person to another because the Lord has created us uniquely. For some of us, it's, it's being a good listener to those who are around us, to those who are, have, have issues and problems. For some of us, it's, it's going to the hospital and visit. For others, it's, it's encouraging youth to be the best that they can be. Perhaps it's, it's cooking and baking and bringing meals to someone who is new in the community or someone who's ha ha the family is being challenged in special kinds of ways and need a meal. Perhaps it means uh, uh, taking food to the hungry in your community or serving in a food pantry or uh, <clears throat> an assistance ministry. Maybe it means giving a ride to, to folks who need to go to the doctor or your response to disasters, or reading to an elementary class. All of these are ways in which you and I may be uh, denying self and taking up our cross, taking up our special ministry, our unique ministry, in order to serve the Lord. And so the first step is moving from our agenda to the Lord's agenda, denying ourselves. And the second step is carrying out our own unique ministry, taking up our particular cross, and now Jesus says, follow me. When you follow someone, uh, you wait on their lead. Now, you take their lead. If I'm going to follow you in your car so you can show me the way to some place that I can't get to because A, either the directions are complicated and it's just more easy to follow you, uh, I don't leave first. I don't pass you on the way. I stay behind you watching for you to for to turn and uh, right or left, go straight, and I let you lead. Well, the same is true in following Jesus. Jesus goes ahead of us, and we simply follow his directions. Sometimes that means waiting. Sometimes that means the Lord is right there with us. At other times, it means that uh, God, the, the Lord sends us in a certain direction because he knows that we can carry out the task. But it really, it really means it's allowing Jesus to lead and us following, us following his instructions and taking directions from him. In a nutshell, discipleship means giving up claim to ourselves, choosing to live and carry out our own unique uh, kind of ministry and letting Jesus take the lead. And to use a baseball metaphor that comes from Rick Dempsey, one pitch, at a time. And one day, 
you realize that Jesus has led you to a place where you never ever dreamed of being because you followed one step at a time because you have denied yourself you've turned over your agenda and allowed the Lord to have his agenda you've taken up your cross you're carrying out your unique ministry and day by day you're following one step at a time let us pray Lord today I once again take up my cross and follow you so take away my complacency and may I live with a sense of urgency to carry out my unique ministry and the person that I am with the talents, gifts, and abilities, O oh Lord, that you've given me. May my love for you be a driving force to live with joyful surrender and service. Here I am, Lord, use me. Today, I deny myself, take up my cross, and follow you. In your name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.